Bonnie Ta, Senior Editor at CNET.com, and today we're taking a first look at the RIM BlackBerry Storm 2 for Verizon Wireless. As you might have guessed, this is the long-awaited successor to the first BlackBerry Storm, which wasn't exactly a success due to all the bugs and performance issues. Um, there were software updates that fixed a number of the problems, but still, that's not really a good way to leave a good impression. So. There's a lot of questions about whether the Storm 2 will be better, and for the most part it is, but there are a couple of issues that worry me, which I'll talk about later. Uh, first, let's take a look at the design of the phone. Just at a glance, there's really no major differences between this and the original Storm, and they're even the same size. However, what you can't see is the new Shure Press technology that sits under the display. If you remember, on the first Storm, there was a mechanical suspension system underneath the screen that created a click when you were typing or opening apps, and the display would actually press down. Uh, well, on the Storm 2, RIM has replaced that suspension system with an electronic one. Uh, the technology is really neat because it, even though the screen doesn't physically move except for around the corners here, electronic activators below it still give off that clicky feel, so it seems like you're pressing an actual button. And the navigation controls below the display are also integrated integrated with the Shure Press instead of being separate buttons now. There are a couple advantages to the electronic version of Shure Press. First, you don't have to apply as much pressure when typing, and it also allows for key rollover and multi-touch. So for example, if you want to capitalize a letter while typing me a message, you can now press the Shift key and the letter key at the same time, whereas before you had to do it separately. There's also a multi-touch support for copy-paste, so all you have to do is place one finger at the beginning of text and then place your other finger at the end of the selection which is really convenient. Um, I definitely like the SharePress interface better than the previous version, but it still doesn't feel as precise as some of the other touchscreen smartphones. Um, there are numerous times when I try to select something from the list menu, and I end up picking the item below it. Uh, and you do get a full QWERTY keyboard in both portrait and landscape mode. Um, I almost always went to the landscape keyboard since I found it easier to use and more precise than the previous storms. But I still made multiple mistakes on it, so it takes some practice. The smartphone does offer predictive text and autocorrection to help, though. The Storm 2 does add some welcome features. The most notable in my book is the built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, Verizon's always been a little stingy when it comes to offering Wi-Fi to enable smartphones, but they're slowly changing this, and we're glad to see it on the Storm. It also works on the carrier's eVideo Rev A network, and it is a world phone and ships with a SIM card, so you can make calls and uh, get 3G data overseas. Bluetooth and GPS are also in there. The phone also has double the memory with 256 megabytes flash memory and 2 gigabytes of onboard memory. And I was also running the updated version of the BlackBerry handheld software, which is version 5. Um, and it brings a number of improvements to the browser, BlackBerry Maps, and other applications. As far as general performance, I'd say the Storm 2 is faster than its predecessor, but the phone did automatically reset itself on me twice. Um, I found that it's only when I'm trying to use the Bing program, so it might be this app specifically that's causing the problems. Uh, but the phone's GPS is really slow as well. I used VZ Navigator uh, to get route calculations, and it was just really slow, and the GPS would often time out, so I almost found it useless to use. Uh, Verizon didn't release pricing or a release date at the time of the shoot, but we think it'll come out in November for around the same price as the original Storm, which is around $200 with the two-year contract. At this point, I'd say you should wait to get more information about Verizon's other upcoming smartphones, including the Samsung Omnia 2 and the Google Android devices, before making a decision on the Storm 2. Um, it is an improvement over the first Storm, but it just doesn't really knock my socks off at this point. So it's better to stick around and see what else is coming up the pipe. I'm Bonnie Chan. This has been your first look at the BlackBerry Storm 2 for Verizon Wireless.